This is the former home of Mao Dun. It's down one of the alleys off Nan Lugu. The plaque outside said he was born after 1974. I don't know if that means in 1974. And that he was an important cultural thinker. It's free, but they one of my passports right down. I guess where I was from. Let's see. Hard toiling at literary performances during the anti-Japanese war period. This is his life exhibit. It's hard to um, find all these little hidden former residences, but there's several around Beijing, just like there was in Shanghai. Sometimes the best way is to use uh, Google Maps, and you have to zoom in and out on an area, and you'll see these little things pop up and disappear. Upsurge of his literary creation in the 30s. If you zoom in too far or out too far, they will disappear off the map. That's how I found this one. I was looking around my neighborhood for things in my neighborhood since I'm staying just up the block. Eighteen ninety six, nineteen nineteen, nineteen nineteen, nineteen twenty seven, twenty seven to thirty seven, thirty seven to forty five, forty five to forty eight. Times in his childhood and youth around the twentieth century. He's from Zhejiang province. I don't know if he was from Tongli. It was Tong something, I think. It might be Jiangsu Tongli. May 4th Movement, Northern Expedition. The Northern Expedition, I think, is when Sun Yat-sen went north to become president. The fourth movement, I think, was the Russian inspired communist socialist movement in uh, China. The October Revolution was the revolution in Bolshevik Revolution in Russia, I think, and then they had their own version of that in. In the next year or two in China, I think. So they have his courtyard house preserved. This is what they make such a big deal of in uh, the hutongs. The hutongs, hutongs are such a big deal in uh, Beijing. But these courtyard homes are nice, I guess, nice enough. I was comparing them to Sujo, and they are different. They're not the same style, certainly. I don't know when they were built. They usually don't talk about that at any of the homes. When they date from, they're a little bit more into the Shikumen in Shanghai, which is the courtyard uh, townhouse, really, style housing. And they have a couple museums that mention it, and the Urban Planning Museum mentions it. But the hutongs here are less promoted. Lived here 74 to 81. He was formerly known as Shen Dehong or Yan Bing. 
He was born in Tong, Jiang County of Zhejiang Province. Famous modern writer, pioneer progressive culture. His former mansion was a two-yard quadrangle with a horizontal tablet hung on the screen wall in front of the gate. Carved with Mao Dun's former mansion by Deng Ying Cho. Mao Dun Library has his collected works and books. <laughs> so Nan Lugu is just one or two blocks this way. Nan Lugu is set up as a pedestrian street and uh, there are several hutongs. A hutong is just an alleyway and it, they come off Nanlugu um, kind of like it looks like a centipede I guess if you're looking from the air with a long strip of Nanlugu and then alleys coming off of it on either side. When you look at a lot of the street maps of uh, Beijing. It's laid out in a grid system, but a lot of the areas are little enclaves onto themselves that look like they dead end, although a lot of them end up being connected by narrow passageways to each other if you walk through them. But these hutongs are what they make uh, a big deal about. Um, as Beijing urban street culture where the locals live there's um, there's high rises around Beijing as well but a lot of the locals still live in the hutongs and uh, as you can see they're usually kind of like in ancient Rome the idea that you would turn your back on the city and you'd have a nice courtyard inside even though the climate here gets a lot colder So usually you'd have your house developed around one or two courtyards. If you were middle class to upper middle class. And they can be quite grand if you go to Prince Gong's mansion over by the uh, Hui Hai Lakes area, not far from here, maybe a 20 minute walk to the uh, west, you'll see a hutong or a courtyard home which they call si he yuan si he yuan are the courtyard homes and you'll see a si he yuan um, that's quite grand it's actually supposed to be the one that was the inspiration for the dream of red mansions a very famous work of literature about a declining aristocrat in the Qing or in the Ming maybe and uh, the home was actually taken away from the uh, from the owner because he used imperial emblems in his design. I just want to walk back over here because there's a sign I didn't read the other day when I was walking down the street here. I don't know what he used, whether it was a five-clawed dragon or something that only the imperial family could use for its designs. They may have just wanted his property. But if you look close around, there are uh, little historic plaques on Nan Lugu. This is Nan Lugu I've turned on to. They talk about uh, what was here before. None of them are really all that informative. Um, the yard has a low lying ground, and rainwater is difficult to drain, which affects living of the residents there. So, Sino Ocean Green Fund decided to use permeable bricks instead to let rainwater seep down. Hmm. It's actually kind of interesting. There was a lot of flooding on this street when it rained. I can tell you that. Hong Cheng Chu's mansion. He was a 
the minister of the Ming, late Ming, in conquering central plains for the Qing dynasty. He was a traitor to the Ming. Hmm. So he helped the, uh, the paleontologists who lived here, Pai Wenzhong, in later times, was the first uh, person to excavate a skull of what they call Peking man, one of the primitive homo uh, species. It was in 1929. I don't know where that, where that happened. I guess somewhere around town. In the basement of the Wang Fujing Oriental Plaza uh, shopping mall at the end of Wang Fujing, they have a Paleolithic site that they found when they were digging the uh, foundations that dates to like 25,000 BC. So there are very old Paleolithic things around Beijing settlements. A primitive man going back to the place to see in her before anyway this shopping street doesn't thrill me if you're staying here for two or three days I suppose it's nice because you get a little bit of nightlife wrapped up in your stay but I just find it annoying when I come home and it's crowded and I have to walk down a pedestrian street and people milling about benchmark stone Datum point to compute and measure altitude of Beijing, all topographical maps. On the basis of this benchmark, all buildings, underground structures, pipe networks, vertical control points designed on the basis of this benchmark. Made of Han white jade, this stone is a cuboid, which is one meter high in height and 0.2 meter in width and bears the Chinese characters, which mean for the measurement of water level of Beijing on one side and the Capital Engineering Bureau on the other side, the original Xi and Jing characters disappeared Due to the weathering action, the stone was discovered in the roadworks in Nanlugu Alley, August 2006. According to historical records, the Beijing Institute is surveying and mapping the height of the peak is 49 meters above sea level, 4 meters higher than the northeast corner of the Imperial Palace. It was on the highest point of Beijing inner city. This stone was built during the early period of the Republic of China, 1914 to 16. At that time, the surveying department of the Capital Engineering Bureau set up 80 odd stones for the measurement of water level of Beijing and corresponding precision was up to 1%. At present there are no more than three such stones left in Beijing. The annoying thing about the pedestrian street here is it's a lot of like curios and knickknacks like not even like antiques, like there are a lot of antique mar markets around where you can buy really cool souvenirs, but here's just silly stuff like sunglasses and a lot of it's overpriced even for the Chinese tourists that are here. This is my hostel. I have a free breakfast in the uh, cafe there every morning. So if I walk down another 10 minutes or 5 minutes, I get to the uh, Nanlugu Station, Line 6. But the entrance is a lot closer to Line 8 here, so you end up walking underground another 5 minutes to get to the Line 6. Then I have to connect to Line 5, walk underground from the, the station at uh, is it Dongxi connect to line five, then I go a few stops, walk underground another five minutes and get to the station for line uh, one or two, depending if I go to Dongdan, it's line one, and then one more stop, I think, for line two. So it's a bit frustrating. I think I'm gonna go to line two today. I hate having to uh, make so many connections, but that's the problem. The layout we were talking about earlier of Beijing really does affect modern uh, traffic movements. Everything has to go around the Imperial City. So if you're driving, it's a headache. All the roads kind of start r ringing Beijing. And so they have these ring roads or beltways 
and then the subway kind of does the same thing it's laid out somewhat like a grid with a couple rings line 2 and line 10 line 2 makes a close ring and line 10 is way out makes a bigger ring around the around Beijing but the problem is because the subway intersects each other uh, at right angles if you want to go across town but not uh, in a total straight line it's kind of hard to get from point A to point B without taking two or three subways and because you have to walk from one to the other underground it's like a really annoying way to make a connection if you want to go two miles you know by the way the crow flies you end up taking you 30 40 minutes to do it and you think well I could probably just walk <laughs> you, you probably could or take the bus so that's the problem when you don't have a central switching station right in the middle of the city Anyway, this is Nanlu Guxiang, and I'm sure there's more treasures to be had if you walk down the Hutongs. If you walk to the west there, the way I was just pointing the camera, you end up at Huahai Lake, which is a nice lake uh, with some nightlife, and there's a big famous jazz cafe down that way. It has live jazz almost every night.